So one of the hardest parts about blogging is just understanding if the keywords you're writing your blog posts on are actually going to rank as such. And because I was prompted by Palab in the comments down below, I'm going to dive into exactly how I analyze the competition for three different keywords. One that you should never write, one that needs a little bit more investigation and one that you can go ahead and hit publish on. So let's jump into it. So search term number one is just going to be how to change the battery on a Mercedes C-Class. I know what you're thinking guys, why the hell would you search for this keyword? Well, truth be told, this is something that I actually searched last week because my car decided to delete itself and turned a tiny crack mirror into a car that basically wouldn't start. No longer angry about it. In all seriousness though, the first thing I like to do when it comes to keyword research and analyzing the competition is just asking myself the three following questions. How much of the search has Google taken? How many of the other blog posts on the first page actually answer the question? And how in depth are those answers? So if we type the search on how to change a Mercedes C-Class battery into Google search, we can see, and this is kind of ridiculous, that the first nine posts to show up are all YouTube videos, with the only blog post showing up on the first page being ranked as number 10. This means then that this search term fails the number one question as Google is basically keeping all of the traffic for itself as it directs that traffic directly to YouTube, a platform which as we all know, it also owns. Now, those of you who are newer to blogging might not understand this yet, but the vast majority of traffic gets directed at those search results that are listed and ranked as number one, number two, and number three on a Google search or any search engine for that matter. This means then for that this search term, the best that we can potentially hope to do is rank as number 10. And if we actually look at that blog post that is ranking on number 10, we can see that the answer is actually super in-depth there as well. As such, I would definitely avoid writing a blog post on this keyword as the competition is incredibly high. So search term number two is just going to be, how much does a car battery weigh? Yeah, you can tell the whole car stuff is still playing on the brain, right? So using the three questions that we asked earlier on, we can see that automatically this is a less competitive keyword to go after than the previous one with Google not really taking any of the search on the first page here. At first glance, actually, this looks like a really good keyword to go after because if you look at positions number four and position number six, we can see that those are both forum search results, which is usually a massive signifier of a less competitive keyword that you can actually write content and rank for. Historically speaking, if you see Reddit, if you see Quora, if you see forums, you should definitely write that blog post. That being said, looks can most definitely be deceiving, which is why I would highly recommend opening up all 10 search results within the first page. And as you can see, not only has the question been answered multiple times, it's been answered in quite a lot of detail across these different blog posts there. As such, I'm gonna say that this search result has medium levels of competition. So what do you do in this situation when there's a blog post that has a couple of forums on there, also has a lot of blog posts that already answer the questions? I mean, should you write it? Should you not write it? What, what's the situation there? The good news is that not all is lost with this search term and you can actually write a blog post for it that might rank. You just need to be a little bit smarter about how you come about it. How I hear you ask, well, what I would first do is I would write around about 30 to 40 posts all around car batteries, all around the automotive space, just to build up a fair bit of authority in Google's eyes. Once that was done, I would then re-look at this search term, re-look at the search results for it, see if they've changed or if they remain relatively the same, and then look to see how we could improve upon these. Now, one way to make your blog post rank in here is just by writing a longer blog post that goes into even more detail than the previous ones there. So looking over the search results, we can see that none of them have put together like a table of the 50 best-selling cars and comparing the weights of each of those individual batteries or any of those kinds of things, that's something that you could do just as your own individual research to it. You're basically just doing something a little bit different that your competitors haven't done. And in Google's eyes, it will hopefully see you as slightly more authoritative and a more in-depth answer that is a lot more on point there. The final search term that we're gonna go after then is do Mercedes side mirrors crack in the cold? Now this is quite a specific keyword. So we're just gonna make an assumption that it has some decent traffic, maybe 50 to 100 pages coming in. That being said, if we answer question number one, we can see that Google hasn't taken that much of the search traffic and it's only really taken position number three, which looks all right in my opinion. Next up, let's look at these blog posts and see if they're actually answering the question. Whilst there's a lot of search results on there that talk all around mirrors cracking in the colds and all those kinds of things, none of them are really specific to Mercedes. Now, just bear in mind that this could be a false distinction, but if you're specifically looking at Mercedes, there are search results here that show Tesla's there. So I feel as though it's a fair distinction to make. Finally, let's look at these blog posts in a little bit more detail and see you know, how in-depth they are if they do a good job answering the question. Well, number one does a halfway decent job of answering the question of if cold 
cracks, side mirrors. There's a pretty decent post there, but if you look over the rest of the search results, there are a lot of forum results in here. Positions two, four, five, and six, in fact, are all forums, and none of them really answer the question. There are a lot more than just general cold mirror crackage there as well. As such, I would say that this is a relatively low competition keyword that you should definitely write content on there. If you want to make things even more in depth, I would actually go into a lot more detail about the Mercedes side of things, but then maybe add a couple of other car brands there, maybe Mazdas, BMWs, Audis, any of those different kinds of things just to really make that blog post as strong as possible. So there you have it, blogging family. That's exactly how I do my competitor analysis when it comes to analyzing the competition, all those kinds of things. It's not really a black and white method. You know, usually you do have to use a little bit of nuance when it comes to comparing individual search terms against each other, but hopefully that gives a pretty well-rounded picture of how I do it. As always, however, blogging family, if you are interested in more videos around personal development, side hustles, blogging, any of those kinds of things, absolutely smash the like and subscribe button as it really, really does help the channel out. And until next week's video, I'll leave you to it. All the best, gang. Have a good one.